It's always a pleasure to talk to you. And, and in this one, I guess we get to see the real heroic side of the character. So without giving too much away, what can you tell us? Well, I guess you, uh, the, what you know of Bard so far is that he's a father of three children. He's a widower. He's just a lowly bargeman who um, is, uh, you know, he's got, the, he's got his principles are in the right place. His moral compass is, you know, is going the right way. And uh, he's put in prison. He's put in a jail and uh, the town is evacuating and he's, uh, he's, he's helpless. Uh, and all he wants to do is protect his, his children, his family, the only thing that he has. And he does something incredible, almost superhuman yes. in a way. This is a man who is a very unlikely hero. He's not a man who's looking for any of that, uh, the accolades of being a hero, or, 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 or he doesn't want anybody to look at him and revere him. He's just, he just wants to look after his kids. And so what he does in the third film is, um, is well, it's, it's nothing short of spectacular. Um, mm. And uh, it's an admirable thing to see somebody who's not necessarily the man for the job, but the man who ends up doing the job and doing it well. Very well. Um, it did require a lot of physical uh, training for you, so what are we yeah. talking about? Ah, uh, there was a lot of archery, there was a lot of uh, rolling around on foam mats in a big freezing cold warehouse next to Wellington Airport for days on end. Mm. Uh, lots of cuts and grazes and lots of knuckles bleeding and uh, um, yeah a lot of that a lot of that stuff that went on for the whole movie um, yeah it's uh, and a lot of mental stuff you know because when you turn a corner and you're being faced with 60 stuntmen in orc costumes with black blood and teeth and eye comp uh, you know um, uh, special uh, lenses to make their eyes yellow and you know, charging at you. I mean, half the battle is what's going on in your head and reminding yourself that they're not real. So. <laughs> well, you know, it does feel quite real when you're on sets like that. It, it kind of yeah. puts you in the mood for the whole saga, yeah, doesn't it? Yeah, you try and have lunch opposite them. That's quite scary. <laughs> yes, for them especially, trying to eat um, mm. with, with that. Uh, what's really great about The Hobbit is that it's a series of, you know, microcosm stories making that big saga. So uh, from an acting point of view, do you get excited about everything that's going on or sometimes you need, just need to concentrate on your bit? Well, I sort of, y y you're aware of the story because obviously you have the script, so you know what, what else is being shot that you might not be part of. But um, um, in a way, you sort of have to let that happen without your control so you just have to sort of focus on your journey and your storyline and what's very nice about Bard's character that he you know he he inter intermingles with a lot of other characters in the film which is quite lovely in a way it's sort of he's the lowly human character but he ends up chatting and uh, to you know Gandalf and and the king mm -hmm. of the elves and you know this is this you forget when you watch the, the third movie I mean even I forgot for a moment you know this is the guy that we saw sailing in empty barrels at the beginning of the second film. You know, this man has come a long way. It's an amazing achievement for uh, just the lowly everyman, you know, who's risen above the rest, not by choice, but by uh, circumstance. Yeah, he's a real reluctant hero, isn't mm. he? Mm. Do you get, um, you know, personally excited about that? You know, uh, hobbits on a set, dwarves on a set, elves on a set, and just humans. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's fun. I mean, it's very unusual. I'll probably never experience that again. It's, uh, I think only in Middle Earth would you have all those different creatures all in one film, you know. Um, but it was, it, was, it was always a very fun time on set, whether you were on the studio lot or whether you were in your trailer, you know, the sights that you would see on a daily basis were you know, it was quite extraordinary. And they, it would be weird when I first arrived, you know, I didn't recognize anybody because I'd meet them out of costume in the evening. The next day they'd mm. be in costume and they'd be saying hello to you, but I didn't know they were, you know. So it took quite a few weeks before that sort of that novelty sort of wore off. And then I was just I knew who they were, but um, very unusual, very unusual experience. Yeah. Exactly. It's like playing dress up on day to day basis. Yeah. So you, yeah. You, you yeah. Do have Guess who? More like. Yeah. <laughs> uh, w from Peter Jackson, are you able to gauge now what he's most excited about in that whole saga? Um, I think he's excited about the whole thing. I think he, you can see he's had a lot of fun in this third movie. I mean, he's. The battle itself is a huge part of the film, and it's uh, as it should be. It is a. 
it's a very technical, complicated battle of five different entities all fighting. Mm -hmm. um, and the, it, it's done in a, in a very clever way in which you understand the geography of the land that's being used in the film. It's not complicated to understand where they're coming from. And I think that's an amazing achievement because it could get super complicated, you know, but it, it works very, very well. And you can see this battle unfolding. You see the disasters waiting to happen and it seems, uh, it took a lot of brain power to, desi to design those scenes and those fight sequences. And um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's just a crazy journey from start to finish. Yeah, and the actors still shine. They don't get drowned in all Not the technological all. advancements. And no. this, I think, is an achievement in itself. Absolutely, yeah. No one drowns out. No one's drowned out by the CGI, which I think is... Um, in a film like this, it's an easy thing to happen. And the fact that it doesn't happen, and every pe everybody gets their moment, everybody has their, uh, their, sp their, their moment in the film and uh, their time to shine, I think, is a, is a beautiful thing. Do you get excited about technology in itself? You know, obviously you're filming something and then it's looking extremely spectacular when mm. it's the finished product. Oh yeah, I mean, there's oh, the opening of this, the th this third, m third movie, uh, you just remember that most of what I'm looking at isn't there. Actually, none of it was mm. there. So that's, um, that's an achievement in itself to make it look like I was looking at that giant dragon and he wasn't actually there at all. He wasn't even designed when I shot that scene. That was the first scene I ever shot in the whole movie. Uh, Tolkien, what does his literature mean to you? Were you uh, a reader of his books? I was, yeah. I mean, I'd read, read The Hobbit and I'd attempted to read some of The Lord of the Rings, the big books. Um, I, I just would like to think that if he was here today, he'd be very proud of what uh, we've achieved with these films and obviously the Lord of the Rings and and to see how the fans, you know, these an incredibly passionate um, people that follow these films. Uh, I, I, I stopped in the, this, um, this bar in the West End of London last night. We were told that there was a big congregation of fans who were dressed up and they were all, you know, they all hang out with each other. It's a big family affair and I turned up and had gone in to say hello and uh, the energy and the love in that room, in that bar, was amazing. It was, it was palpable, and you don't experience that on every movie. So, um, yeah, it was very special, very special experience. And finally, I'm asking all the actors the same question. Will you sit down and uh, watch all six in one go? Are yeah, I was going to wait for a, a snowy, rainy, cold Sunday when I have nothing to do and I can wrap up in a duvet and a big bag of popcorn and watch the whole six back to back. Yes. You, you literally, you're dropped onto a, a, a high speed train almost, you know, <laughs> there's no pulling off from the station. <laughs> it, the station was miles away and you're actually full speed, full pelt, um, you know, and that, that's how it feels. You, you hit the floor running and there is no time, there's no, there's no need for any more storytelling. <laughs> the story is up and running and, you're, and you, running, are, yeah. you know exactly yeah. what's happening. Yeah. And, um, which is which is great. I mean, it, it doesn't let you uh, settle into your seat at all. It, uh, which I think is exciting. You know, and it's how our third movie about a, an enormous battle between five armies should be. What do you hope the many thousands of fans of The Hobbit take away from this? That now that it's over. I guess for many of the fans, many of the fans that were fans from The Lord of the Rings, they'll be reliving that sad moment of when they fi the final one came out and again they'll have to feel like that that feeling of uh, that Christmas won't be the same again. Um, the final goodbye. The final goodbye, it really is a goodbye and I think uh, I think they'll be very excited and, uh, and, and the one thing I felt after watching The Final Hobbit was um, I can't wait for that first snowy cold Sunday when I'm uh, when I have the full box set when I can watch all six back to back <laughs> <laughs> so they shipped you in did they afraid so when did you get here um I think it took a week and I got here yesterday <laughs> so I'm on my 17th espresso and everything's fine uh, now yeah I think you must be used to that yeah a little bit but God, you would have done a bit of flying back and forth during your time down there I did yeah Aren't I loved you? it you loved that Ooh, flight yeah loved it yeah okay and that's just so nice <laughs> In well, New Zealand, no, they're uh, like the happiest people ever. They're like, they're <laughs> so enough, lovely. They are great. And I guess if you can just, you can't, people can't email you or text you or no. get you to do anything. So no. what you can do is just drink lovely New Zealand wine. That's right. And watch The Hobbit, which is what I did on this oh, particular journey. Did. I didn't do that. No, I'm sure you didn't. But I think you've probably had a chance to see this one, I hope. Yes, I saw it last night. How yeah. did that feel? 
um, very, very exciting. Um, uh, weird, uh, s like terrifying to start the film and know that the first scene in the film was this m huge moment in my character's journey. And, and, um, and then seeing the final moment of the film and feeling very satisfied that uh, I think we've delivered, Peter's delivered something very, very special and I think everybody's going to be super happy with it. Um, absolutely. I shed several tears, a little bit jet lagged, but I still found it an incredibly em emotional mm. journey. And I think with something like this, it is steeped in the history of, of the entire Middle Earth saga. Yep. Um, do you feel, how do you feel leaving it behind? I know you left Middle Earth behind a little while ago now, but yeah. um, for this to be the final film. Oh, it's, I, it's bittersweet, isn't it? Mm. It's always one of those moments where you feel like, yes, it's time to say goodbye for the final time. But... Uh, we did so. We were so proud of the work we've, what we've done, and what we've achieved with these films. And this is the final time we all get to hang out together. It's the final Christmas we all get to yeah. see each other and and uh, and give off this final film over. But it's um, it's an achievement, and it really is the best finale I would have wished for. I think Peter's done such a great job. Oh, you all have, and Bard the Bowman, so beloved, and you know, essentially, arguably, one of the most heroic moments of the entire trilogy in this mm. film and as you say in, um, in kind of the, the opening segment. Um, does it, what do you think makes him just take that step and, and believe in himself that he's capable of, of doing something like that? I don't know. It's difficult to tell. You know, like when people do things in everyday life, you know, like somebody will stop and look, help someone on the street and, you know, put them in an ambulance or if they've, they, somebody, you know, people do these things all mm. the time and I think just every, Bard is an everyman. He's just a guy who's, uh, he's a widower, he has three children, he has nothing, he has no money, he has nothing. And all of a sudden, he's, the, he's fighting for all he has, is, and that's his children. And he does something which I don't think he believes that he can kill a dragon. I just don't think he's, he thinks he can do it. But he, what else can he do? He wants his children to know that he fought for them to the last breath. Mm -hmm. And that's what he does, you know, and I think when he climbs that bell tower, that's what he's thinking. I don't think he, anything more. Come on, the dragon's enormous. So um, it's a beautiful moment. And it's, it's, a, it's what I like to see is, what I like to take from it is that people can do superhuman things sometimes if they are put in the right position and they put their mind to it and they're forced into a position. Sometimes they'll do things that they don't, can't even believe or expect of themselves. And I think, Bard is one of those people, you know, he ends up becoming a leader. He doesn't want the accolades of being a hero. He just wants to look after his kids. That is that is his sole purpose, is to give them the life that they deserve. And um, and he ends up having the, the whole lake town <laughs> looking to him. And all of a sudden he's put in this, this role of leadership. And then he's he's conferring with, the, you know, the king of the elves and, and Gandalf. And, you know, you see this man and it's funny because I was watching it last night and there's, you know, he's, he changed costume and all of a sudden He's in this, he's chatting to Thranduil and Gandalf, and I'm thinking, this is the same character that in the beginning of the second movie was barging these dwarves across a lake with barrels of dirty fish. <laughs> he was. What a journey, you know, what an amazing journey this character has. And I mean, I, 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 I appreciated every, every step that he made in the film. Um, just very quickly, because I'm going to be wrapped in a nanosecond, you talk about an amazing journey. How has that been for you, spending that time in New Zealand and being part of this, this Hobbit? No, it was, it was amazing. I mean, I, I didn't just say goodbye to the film, you know, three years ago when I left New Zealand. I said goodbye to my home of New Zealand and my friends and family that well, they weren't my family, but they were like my family because that's who we hung out with. We, you know, we drank with, we walked with, we fished with, you know, we did everything with each other and we just hung out and they, I left them all in New Zealand. So um, it's sad in a way, but uh, I always know that there's a, there's a, there's many open doors in, in, in Wellington, especially that would uh, give me a bed for the night if I actually turned up there. No question, so. I think you'd be safe, you'd yeah. be fine. Um, thank you so no. much. In London for The Hobbit, the finale, the epic finale of this trilogy, The Battle of the Five Armies, and hello, it's good to see you again, sir. How are you? I'm well. How, th this, this battle and the role that you get to play in is just amazing. Uh, how physical was this for you? Uh, it's as physical as it looks. I mean, it was full on. Um, it was actually the first, the first, the scene in the beginning of this third movie is the first scene that I shot ever in the film, which is quite weird. 
was like three and a half years ago I shot that scene. So, really? Yeah, yeah. It was my first day, and I remember them putting me in cables, and I was wired wired to the ceiling, and then they'd reduce the, the rooftops to the ground so that I could jump over them, and flames, and you know, it was it was it was full on. I was sh I was shredded by the end of that week. My my knuckles were just I had no skin left on my knuckles from. It was a disaster, but it, it looks fantastic, and you don't see any of the blood. So it, that's it fine. It looks amazing, and and obviously we know from the desolation of Smaug that the dragon has been awakened, mm. and so the way that we start this one off is pretty intense and fiery. Yeah, um, I described it earlier. It was like you're not you, you're not getting on the train as it's leaving the train station. <laughs> you're getting on it halfway through its journey, and it's at full pelt, um, and they drop you on it. It feels you know you you you're at it, there's the pace. It, is at 100% at the beginning of the film You've, because you, you're hitting it just as that dragon leaves the mountain and you know exactly where he's going. Um, so, uh, yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it doesn't really let you settle down into your seat for very long. I was asking Martin if, there was, uh, if it was emotional being able to, uh, to wrap this up. Has, has it been tough for you? Is it a... A sad farewell, or um, yeah, is it? It, yeah, it's a little sad. It is, it's it's bittersweet, isn't it? Those moments you know, because you feel very proud of what you've achieved and what what I was part of, and but I also feel very much like this is uh, this is a big chapter of of all our lives. You know, it took quite a long time to to make, and obviously we've been talking about every movie for the last three years. Every Christmas, mm -hmm. we see each other and we all hang out and give each other hugs and have a good few nights out and you know watch the the world received the film and, and you know and and this is the final time we'll do that so it's probably the final time I'll see a lot of these people for a long time you know so yeah it's it's sad but it's also uh, we I'm really really happy with this film I like I like everything about it I think it's a it's a perfect finale for such a huge story I think Peter's done a wonderful job and I think everybody's gonna love it it's absolutely epic is it are you able to pick a favorite out of the three um, this one. Yeah. Yeah. No I think I doubt. think I agree with you on that. Mm. Yeah. I mean this yeah. one is this one is so so visually stunning in so many ways. It is. Um I just yeah. I mean every every uh, and also by this point you've seen all the characters, you mm -hmm. know? So you've chosen your favorites, so you're following a journey of one of the characters or you like certain ones, you don't like certain ones, but they're all up and running, you know? And 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 so every character in the film has their moment where you see the closure from all of, each of them and whether they're connected to each other in certain storylines but you know that's a it's an amazing thing because it's such a humongous ensemble of of, of characters yeah. you know? so to see them all have their moment um in such a like uh, sort of amazing finale like this is uh, is a lovely thing i think also with the characters too is that you mentioned you know the characters Mm. I would say that at least you think you know the characters because I think each character in this faces a, a different poignant moment as things are wrapping up. We, very much we, so, We yeah. see some new aspects, don't you we? You do. You absolutely do, yeah. Yeah, you think you know somebody very well and then all of a sudden, you know, they start thinking differently and speaking differently or saying something and you think, wow, you know. Um, for my character, Bard, I think you see a man who, you know, he ha he's been put into a position of leadership and to be you know people are looking at him looking to to him for answers and he's just a lowly bargeman you know and he does something almost superhuman you know but it's not superhuman it's just a, it's just an everyman rising a little but a little above everybody else and doing something that he couldn't believe he could do himself and i think that's quite a an admirable quality when you see people you know in our everyday lives who do things completely self-sacrificing themselves for something else and you just think you, I just admire it so much and Bard sort of shows those qualities and um, you know you see a side of him that even he isn't expecting to uh, to be able to show so it was a cool moment but we'll keep that between us yes we, we should go see the movie mm -hmm. The Hobbit The Battle of the Five Armies good to see you as always nice to see you too thanks thanks how's it going very good. Good. Uh, so, you know, this film, uh, obviously the demand of Bard, much more physical in this one. You know, it's not so much just the archery. Like, so what, what was required of you to train, you know, with the physicalities of this? Um, oh, well, a lot. I mean, I, <laughs> I think we were all quite, uh, we were put through our paces quite a bit in this film. Um, 
The Battle of the Five Armies, the, the main battle that you see in the third movie was shot um, after we finished our principal photography. So we all went back and we all had to do training and learn okay. fight sequences and choreography. And uh, so, and obviously I had quite a lot of fighting in the third movie as well as horse, bike, horse riding and, you know, using a sword on horseback and a bow and arrow. Sure. There, was, there was a huge amount. But weirdly, like, the first scene in the, in the third movie was the first scene I ever shot. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. I remember the first day I was on set and... Um, I was on cables and I was sliding down burning rooftops <laughs> and they were spraying the roof so I could slide down them because they were silicon and and uh, I remember the finishing one take and everybody disappeared from the studio because it had snowed in Wellington oh. for the first time in 40 years <laughs> oh, and wow. everybody was outside trying to catch snowflakes in their mouths including <laughs> Peter Jackson. Just a good distraction. Well yes, I was obviously <laughs> thought I was doing something good but obviously <laughs> snow is more important. Yeah, but uh, it was uh, it was a lot of, lot of physicality and, yeah. and, and really enjoyable. Fun. I mean, you see everybody has their they're pushed to the limits physically in this film. There's a lot of fight sequences with everybody. Sure. With your characters, you've played, you know, villains, obviously, and, and now this is more of like a, a father figure, you know, a heroic figure. Mm. Uh, what kind of role gets your juices flowing more so? Is it the, the, the evil or the good? <laughs> no, I don't think it's about whether they're good or evil. It's just about <laughs> the character and what the character is, is it, if it's a challenge or if it's... Uh, if it's going to, uh, if it's going to force you or, or, or challenge you to uh, delve deeper into your ability as an actor, I think that's what I look for in, yeah. in roles. Is something that's uh, that I've not done before, or, or a character, or an emotion, or a feeling, or a journey that I've never experienced or or gone on. Yeah. So I guess that's what look, I look for in, in a role. Sure. So, but whether they're good or bad, I don't think that really <laughs> matters. Sometimes the good ones turn out to be better than the. The, sure. The, you know, yeah. So uh, you, you never can tell. I, I've heard Peter Jackson's got like a warehouse, just basically full of props and whatnot. If you could go in yeah. there and, and just kind of put one in your pocket and walk away with it home, what, what would be which one, one would it be? Yeah. It would probably be uh, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Yeah. 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 He took us out on it one night around really? Wellington. Yeah. He's yeah. got the Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. He owns the car. Yeah. I didn't know yeah. that. And it and it makes the noise. The really? engine makes the noise. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yep, he took us out in the streets of Wellington at 10 p.m. one night in uh, the Chitty Chitty Bang Bang car. That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, and played the song very loud on the iPod shuffle that he'd uh, incorporated into, into the dashboard. Yeah, That's you can't funny. Play, you can't go in that car without singing that song. Yeah. Of course not. <laughs> a bunch of dwarves, elves, and humans sitting in the back of Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Yeah, yeah. it was quite a sight. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. I really nice appreciate to meet you, it. Yeah. Yeah. Good luck with everything. Thank. I just saw the film. Literally, I just got done with the film about 30 minutes ago. Wow. And I just sat there at the end and it was just going, wow. But I was getting a little emotional. I was like, I can't believe it's over now. Yeah. So I got to ask you, I mean, what is it like that it's it's done now? Well, I only saw it last night for the first time. So uh, we all did. Um, and... Uh, it's 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 sad. It is. It's sad. It's it, we all knew it was coming. You know, you do with movies, but you don't usually have to say goodbye once. But in this movie, we say goodbye every year. Um, we knew that this was the final goodbye, and um, so yeah, it's um, it's bittersweet. I think we're all very proud of what we achieved in this film, and this third movie is so special and very powerful. When you found out you were part of this, uh, you know, this this series, how did that make you feel? Because these are just legendary stories. Uh, yeah, I did, it didn't really sink in for a few weeks. I was on my way to do another film, so I was sort of, my mind was in a different place, and then I got offered the job, and I was like, oh, amazing. And I really did get involved. I mean, my life, I set a life up in New Zealand. We, we all did. And that was, that was how we lived our lives for all the time we were there. You know, everybody lived in each other's houses, and we hung out together, and... We went fishing together and traveled together and worked together. You know, these books are legendary, and there's people that actually just know lines from the books and know much more than, than I would. Mm. Do you feel any pressure that you're, you're, you're acting out a character that people know so well? I mean, at the end of the day, I'm on set with Peter and whoever else is on the, in the scene with me, and we're doing our job. We're doing what we think is right, and, and I'm following Peter's direction, and I'm giving him my ideas, and... We're creating something special together. Your characters action are Działania twojej postaci są najmocniej kształtowane przez miłość do dzieci. Zastanawiam się, co kieruje twoimi działaniami w życiu. 
podobnie, chociaż nie mam dzieci. Miłość do rodziny, przyjaciół i bliskich mi osób, tych, którzy mnie uszczęśliwiają i sprawiają, że się uśmiecham, to dla nich żyję. A miłość do pracy? Kochasz swój zawód? O tak, kocham aktorstwo. Jestem szczęściarzem, że mogę robić to, co robię. Moja kariera ogromnie mnie pochłania, odciąga mnie od moich bliskich, bo dużo czasu spędzam poza domem. Ale wiem, że miałem wiele szczęścia w życiu. Ja zawsze chciałem być aktorem. Mam 35 lat i robię to, co kocham. Dokładnie. Twój bohater mówi, nie jestem dowódcą, ale świetnie mu idzie dowodzenie ludźmi. Czy ty jesteś typem przywódcy? Niektórzy twierdzą, że lubię się rządzić. Jeśli znajduję się w sytuacji, w której czuję, że ludzie potrzebują... Tak. I nie ma komu przyjąć dowodzenia, to wtedy chętnie biorę na siebie tę rolę. Ale nie jestem pierwszą osobą, która rwie się do rządzenia. Wolę jednak trzymać się z tyłu. Ale jeśli muszę, to mogę być szefem. A dobrze działasz w zespole? Tak, bardzo dobrze. Jak na jedynaka, to nawet powiedziałbym świetnie. Jesteś teraz aktorem pierwszoplanowym. Czytałam niedawno artykuł o tym, że stajesz się powoli hollywoodzkim aktorem z pierwszej ligi, otrzymując coraz więcej propozycji głównych ról. Ponieważ jesteś bardzo atrakcyjny fizycznie. Przestań, nie chcę tego słuchać. Czuję się zawstydzony. Więc ten artykuł zapowiadał, że jesteś nowym hollywoodzkim przystojniakiem. I zastanawiam się, czy nie drażni cię to, że show biznes tak bardzo zajmuje się wyglądem zewnętrznym, ignorując nieco talent i umiejętności. To bardzo ciekawe pytanie. A wiesz, Hollywood zawsze takie było. Gwiazdy filmowe zawsze były stawiane na piedestrach. Byli kwintesencją luksusu. Popatrz tylko na Marilyn Monroe czy James Adina. To jest część tej roboty i trzeba to zaakceptować. Ja nie grywam jakichś szczególnie pięknych bohaterów. Są to raczej zwykli ludzie, ale o gustach się nie dyskutuje. Rozumiem, że w filmach estetyka, ładny wygląd ma znaczenie. Dostajesz jakąś rolę, bo wyglądasz tak, a nie inaczej. Ja dostałem rolę Barda w Hobbicie, bo wyglądam tak, a nie inaczej. A jednak talent i umiejętności aktorskie powinny zawsze być na pierwszym planie. Ja tak myślę. Zgadzasz się? Zgadzam się z tobą. Jesteś walijczykiem. To prawda. Ludzie nie wiedzą zbyt wiele o Walii. Ja wiem, że język walijski jest najstarszym językiem europejskim. Dowiedziałam się też, że w Walii mieszka 3 miliony ludzi i 11 milionów owiec. A co ty wiesz o Polsce? Nigdy nie byłem w Polsce. Miałem jechać do Warszawy niedawno. Miałem tam robić film, ale nic z tego nie wyszło. Poza tym wiem, że po polsku moje imię to... Bardzo dobrze. No widzisz? Niedaleko miejsca, w którym mieszkam w Londynie, jest fantastyczna polska restauracja. Byłem tam kilka razy, ale nie pamiętam, co ja bym. To był jakiś rodzaj pierogów. Tam pierogi. Właśnie. Zaczynałeś od grania na West Endzie. Jako aktor muzykalowy tęsknisz za tym. Zdarza ci się jeszcze to sam śpiewać? Tak, kiedy tylko mam okazję. Jakiś czas temu byłem w Nowym Jorku z moim najlepszym przyjacielem. Nie mogliśmy się powstrzymać. Po kolacji zaczęliśmy przemierzać miasto w poszukiwaniu baru karaoke. Znaleźliśmy coś lepszego, bar z pianiną, gdzie pozwolono nam zaśpiewać. Śpiewaliśmy tam całą noc. Było bardzo śmiesznie. Żałuję, że nie byłam w tamtym barze. Żałuj, naprawdę się działo. Bilbo, mój charakter, idzie na podróż z 14 czy więcej dwarwów. Wiele dwarwów się zbiera na jego drzwi. 13 dwarwów. Gandalf zrobił to. Jest mapa, jest klucz, jest kwestia. Oni muszą wrócić swoje złoto i swoje kraju, które są być użytkowane przez dragon, który się nazywa Smaug. Potem oni wrócą przez chwilę i wyszukują się. Znajdują się trolli. 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 Znaj Let's just fast forward to the elves because we only have a minute. It's really important we get ourselves in there. Yeah, but then they meet the elves. They meet the elves. Yeah, the elves. They end up in Lake Town by my character Bard the Bowman. He sails them in under the premise of barrels of fish. And then they go to the Lonely Mountain. There's a secret door. The secret door is marked on the map. Thorin has to find his way into the mountain. They get to the secret door. And they meet Benedict Cumberbatch. I mean, they meet Smaug. They go into his lair. And they cause absolute. 
chaos there. Bilbo hides in, and uh, his job is to try and find the Arkenstone. They steal yeah. his Arkenstone. Smaug gets angry. The dragon leaves the mountain. He looks like he's going to go and blow up Lake Town. And that mm. is where we leave you.